Oh darn, by the time I got the camera, the little platform is already lowering. I can see it through the trees, but I'm not sure that you can. See, when you live in one of these bar buildings, when you move in or out, um, they do, uh, there you can see at the bottom, I think, maybe. There's a truck there and there's a, a lift mechanism. They put these very high ladders up there, long ladders of extensions, and there is a platform um, which goes up and down, and it takes your stuff uh, right in and out of your window. And of course, this isn't always for bar buildings in France. They're called bar because uh, it's like a, a long bar. And um, they were built this way uh, because they needed a lot of housing after World War II, and there was a shortage. And they found this uh, construction was fast because they could slide cranes up and down along the sides of them and, and build them, you know, a story at a time or, you know what I mean. And now they're considered passé and this one is going to be destroyed uh, soon, I believe. And uh, it's, it's already like getting on 50 years old, so it's time for it to go. And um, it's not very much occupied anymore. So the people who are here are leaving. And you see, the, the it's, it's dangerous work, I, I, but moving is very dangerous and strenuous. And they're balancing, it looks like a freezer unit or something up there. And, uh, you know, the elevators, there may not even be elevators, but uh, if there are, they may not be equipped to take the stuff up and down, and also that would limit the access of other people in the building while the things are being moved, which is an inconvenience. It's also potentially dangerous because, I, you know, I don't see any fire escapes here, you know. I know there aren't any... Uh, in a lot of buildings there there are in mine but uh, only for the apartments I mean only by the back way not by this front way I don't think this has fire escapes yeah I know it's it's they don't they don't do this building anymore it's considered very ugly now and uh, it was merely functional for its time but yeah there you can see it looks like some appliances are being loaded and and boxes and stuff and the guy who's up at the top is going to send the platform down now so you can see it moving to the guys in the truck down there there it goes oh. uh, I was going to say um, some of the very very old buildings in alleys and stuff and up steps and everything I mean there's really no access to these places so if you want to buy a grand piano or something or, or whatever um, uh, you better think about <laughs> it, it staying there permanently and um, a lot of massive furniture country French furniture for example was built in the room you know they would bring in the big pieces and and the workers would or the worker would would create the piece in the room and sometimes they break down and actually can be disassembled, but not always. So sometimes if you go by like old abandoned houses and stuff here, if you can look in through the windows, you can see these big beautiful pieces in there. <coughs> and the only way to get them out, I think, is really to break windows and walls and stuff. You know, it's... it's uh, Uh, it's, it's, it's quite something to consider. Well, moving as hell. You know, I had a dream last night that my spouse had decided, he said, we're selling the house. And I don't know if it meant our two houses in Brittany or, or this apartment or what, but he said that we were going to move someplace else, not in Paris. And I, I said, well, okay. 
And also he said we have to give up the co-op too, which made me realize during the dream that uh, I was confusing Paris with New York and my previous marriage with another man. And I just kind of was kind of shocked and disappointed because I hate moving and I've had to do it a lot in my life. Uh, but I was sort of like, well, you know, maybe I'll like it better. I'll, I'll just go along with him and make the best of it that I can. <clears throat> He's usually made good decisions for us. So, you know, I'll just do it. And um, so there you see the platform is going back up again. And looks like somebody's leaving because, you know, they do have to vacate this building and, you know, they can't just kick people out. This is across the street from me. It's a social housing project, you know. So everybody, it takes years, but everybody has to be properly relocated. And then they're building new uh, logements behind this, a few of which will be private, apparently, but most of which are still, um, you know, subsidized housing. Uh, for people of modest means and it's a very good thing and I know that that this building looks really ugly I mean it really does look ugly so does mine in fact which is a private building but a lot of these uh, ashalem as they're called here um, the apartments are great and people just are on waiting lists for years to get one and um, then they don't want to leave you know, they don't want to be relocated to even a smaller one. France has a problem with uh, reassessing people's situations. I know that my last, uh, my, my, my in-laws here um, were living in an HLM in the Camelon du Set, which is a near suburb of Paris. It's right on the border, uh, down more in the south. It's in the Marne la Vallée département. And, um, Oh, it's very risky. You have to you have to clear below and make sure nothing falls. That's for sure. Um, and when they, uh, I know that they had a neighbor who who became single. I think widowed, and uh, they wanted him to move, and he did. Everything was okay, and had had once my husband left the home with his parents, the apartment that they had, where they had been for decades, um, it would have been a problem for them to stay there indefinitely because they had an extra bedroom and it was really, you know, too much space for uh, a retired couple who no longer had a child with them. So uh, they did the right thing and they reported their intention to retire to their homes in Brittany but said they needed time and everybody said okay fine and they left properly everything was done properly and then the apartment was rehabbed and it was re-rented re to another um, middle income family so it's, it's a good system but it moves very 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 slowly and then you have old buildings like this. Of course, I, I didn't buy this apartment for the great view. I bought it for the huge amount of space. And also it was abandoned, so I could pay cash for it. And uh, got it for a pretty fair price. Although, we had to wait for a while because City Hall always has first dibs on that sort of thing here. You know, for their own employees. For the, the municipal employees. And we had to pay a bribe to get this place. It was very underhanded uh, to some property consultant or something. It came to 6,000 US dollars. And, you know, we could have shown up with less cash and, and said, well, we didn't get all of the, I think it was 30,000 francs or something, together and, you know, just had them in the other pocket. And he, it was obvious right then that he would have accepted less, you know. But whatever, we paid the money and we got the place. But uh, I will never buy an abandoned place again. You know, I will never buy a fixer-upper again. It was just horrible, horrible. 
you know, fixing this place up for years and years. And there was nothing here. There wasn't even a working toilet, you know. So there you go. So I got some neighbors moving out, and it's cold here today. All right, bye-bye.